Welcome back to RFID Made Simple. Today I'm joined by special guest Chris Brown, RFID subject matter expert for TSC Printronics. Today Chris is going to help me demonstrate and showcase the T4000 printer from Printronics. He will highlight some of the printer's main features as well as showcase how to calibrate the media and the RFID settings for the printer. Without further ado, let's get into it. Thank you, Colin. Thank you for the introduction and the opportunity. So, as Colin said, I'm Chris Brown. I'm the RFID subject matter expert at TSC Printronics Auto ID, and today I'm going to go through the basic setup of the T4000 RFID printer, which we call a light industrial printer. It's part of our RFID product lineup. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go through loading what we would call the media. By the way, note the bifold door, which can give you a smaller uh, footprint needed for the printer. So loading the media, when we talk about media, we're normally talking about ribbons and labels. So here I'm going to show you loading up the media. Now I've cheated a little bit and preloaded the ribbon, but I'm going to show you loading the labels. Just put them on the back panel here. Adjust the guide, slide it in gently to the labels. I then run the labels through the feed mechanisms. Now note this, the front panel door we allow that to open up, which allows easier label loading, especially with on-metal tags. There are various media guides in the printer. For example, I have this one back here at the roll. I have another one here. Gently slide that in so it's brushing the media, the labels. There is another one here. That has a little lip on it. I want to slide that so it's the label stock is running just underneath that. And then what you cannot see, there is also a fork. And I have the labels running through the fork, the center of the fork. And that fork has a blue handle underneath that allows you to easily slide it in and out. Also on that fork, it's not just a media guide, it also has the gap and black mark sensors. So if you're using black mark, you want to make sure to position the black mark sensor over the black mark. In this case, we're just using labels with gap, so we can position that media guide fork pretty much anywhere, it doesn't matter. I'll put it right about in the middle. I have the labels coming out, and then you remember this door there's a little slot in the door, and the labels feed right through. You close the door, close the print head, and you're done. Okay, we have the labels and ribbon loaded. Uh, we've turned the printer on. You can see by the LED light bar that it's ready for action, supposedly. But first, we need to calibrate the media. And there are two calibrations involved. The first is the standard media calibration that has nothing to do with RFID. It's just about the printer figuring out the label dimensions, basically the label length and where the gap is. The second calibration we will do is what we call our RFID auto calibration, and we're going to run through that as well. So the printer is in online mode. We're going to press the green pause button to take the printer offline and be able to run these calibrations. You will notice three options, wizard, settings, and calibrate. That calibrate feature there is non-RFID and we are not going to use it today. We are going to use the wizard. So I scroll to the left to wizard, hit the enter button. I now have my different options, including under wizards. I have a printer setup wizard, print quality wizard, an application wizard, and an RFID wizard. Because we're playing with RFID labels today, we are going to use the RFID wizard. I scroll to the right, scroll down, 
Here we are at the RFID wizard. There's a little lightning bolt, which means if we press enter, the RFID wizard will run. I press enter. We begin the RFID wizard. I can scroll through the wizard with the right arrow key. First question it asks me is, am I going to be running labels with gap or black mark? It is set to gap. That happens to be correct today, but I could press enter and change it to black mark. I'm going to stick with gap. Next, it's going to tell me where the RFID antenna is. In this case, this is the T4000. That little bar that we saw here on the door outside in the front, that's actually our encoding antenna. And you will notice that it's above the label path, which we have designed that way to work with on metal tags as well. We don't need to position that antenna at all. It runs across the entire four possible inches of print width. Keep scrolling. Now we're going to run the auto calibrate. This is the non RFID media calibration, the traditional calibration that you would do with all barcode label printers. I'm going to press enter and the printer will now figure out where the gap is and what the label size is. Boom, we have a green screen completed. We are done with that. We scroll to the next step, which is the infamous or famous with us RFID calibrate procedure. Again, a little lightning bolt to run it. I'm going to press enter and the RFID calibration process starts. This, depending on your label size, uh, inlay location, and even the chip, it'll take between one and a half and four minutes. Uh, that's generally competitive in the industry, if not a little bit faster than everybody else's. The RFID auto calibration, what that will do is determine which chip is in the label, where the inlay is placed under the label stock, and the optimal read and write powers to use. You do not need to go into the printer and manually input any of those settings. Very simple. As the RFID calibration process is running, you will notice here popping up on the screen right now, it will show you the progress of the calibration. So right now we are at 20%, it'll jump to 40, 60, and so on, and then eventually it should pop, flash a green screen telling you complete and success. So the RFID calibration has completed, it tells me enter to exit, but it also gives me a quick overview of the inlay position and the optimal write and read powers that it has determined. We have a green check mark. We have completed successfully. Press enter to exit. Now I can continue on with my wizard. Next step is just telling me that it is complete. Continue on. I can go back to the home screen. Now I am ready to print and encode labels. That's all there was to it. I would put the printer into online mode, but you will notice there is one last step. The printer has now determined settings for the label size, the gap, uh, the inlay position, all of the RFID settings. And the printer is asking me here if I want to save those settings as what we call a configuration. I'm going to do that. With our printers, you can save up to eight different configurations. And that means every time you load that label type, you only need to select that configuration. You do not need to go through the calibration processes again. So you can work with standard smart labels like this. Maybe you would have a four by six shipping label and maybe you would have an on metal tag from Metalcraft. You could have all of those pre-calibrated and stored as configurations, and then your users would be able to easily swap the different label types in and out. So it's just asking me if I want to save these settings in this configuration. I hit enter, yes, completed, and now my printer is online, ready to print and encode with these labels. Please ignore that barcode, that's just from a previous print job I did. You will notice that during the calibration processes, I've used oh, 10, 12 labels. And if we do not want to waste those, they might be expensive tags, especially on metals. 
that's no problem. We can just open up the printer, open the print head, and rewind the label stock. Position it near the front. Oops, went a little too far. Close the print head. And I can press this blue feed button. And now the labels are all lined up. The calibration settings are all in there and the printer is ready to go. Chris did a fantastic job showcasing the power, the precision, and the accuracy of the Printronics T4000 printer. Thermal transfer printing doesn't have to be difficult. So if you follow our steps here today, you will be printing and encoding your RFID tags in no time. Thanks for joining me on this week's episode of RFID Made Simple. Make sure you leave some comments below on what other concepts you want.